Yeah, you've made me sweat. <laughs> I've gone very sweaty. You scared Joe. <laughs> so, pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. Is my mic even on? Hello. No. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Abraham Reisman. I'm an editor at New York Magazine. None of you care, but um, I'm going to be moderating tonight. Uh, you know a lot of these guys. This is Seth Rogen, Sam Catlin, Garth Ennis, Stomach Cooper, Ruth Nega. All right. All right. Ruth Nega and, uh, and Joe Gilgan. So, um, <laughs> what? Three of mine? No. And fucking Joe Gilgan. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. No, no, it's fine. I'm you want to do it? Or, no, no. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we start, I want to find out how many here uh, read the comic, have read through it? Okay. Wow. I want to get a sense wow. of that. OK. <laughs> so uh, first question for everybody. Have you seen Tom Cruise recently? <laughs> and next time you see him, what do you plan to talk about? Seth. <laughs> I actually know Tom Cruise, so it's fucked up. Uh, I, ha I will run into him. Yeah. I'm praying he has a good sense of humor about this. <laughs> I don't know how I would feel if someone exploded me, honestly. So it's hard for me to say I hope he gets it, because I don't know if I would. Um, but <laughs> I hope he gets it, <laughs> is what I'll say. You, you only explode people you, that you're big fans of. That's a big, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the truth. And I love Tom Cruise. Edge of Tomorrow was dope. Uh, underrated, so, yeah, it was un great. Totally underrated. Yeah. And so I hope, yeah, I hope it, it will be an awkward interaction, 100%. Right. I'll update you guys after it happens, but uh, yeah. Sam, at what point in the writing process did that joke come up? I mean, it's what everybody talks about. I'm just curious. Uh, towards the end, I think. Uh, yeah, we we needed one more religion to sort of. Uh, <laughs> so what's the easiest religion at? to go after? Yeah. 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 So we figured. Uh, yeah, Scientology. And we're validating it as a religion. We are. Yeah, so <laughs> I. We're authenticating. It is, yeah, it's being authenticated. It's, yeah. So it's very complimentary, yeah. I think. It's All right. an homage. <laughs> so um, let's go back to a little bit of prehistory. A lot of comics fans here. Garth, can you take us back to you and Steve Dillon coming up with Preacher? Uh, good, I'm glad you mentioned Steve, actually, because he. We all love Steve Dillon, right? He's great. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we, we proceeded largely on instinct. We, we sort of took bits, stuck them together, hoped for the best, leapt into the dark, <laughs> crossed our fingers, and, and it worked. But it does mean that I've generously handed these gentlemen a big pile of problems to solve. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they've done an admirable job, but yes, it was hardly an organic beginning. It was bits and pieces and hoping for the best and, oh shit, this works, and now we have to finish it. <laughs> How did you pitch it to DC? Like, what did you say this thing was going to be? I still don't remember. <laughs> there, was a, there was an outline, but it's long gone. It's lost to history. Yeah. All the scripts are gone, too. Um, I think I said it's, it's a... I don't even know if I did say this, but later on I claimed that I said it was a Western. <laughs> and, and it had supernatural elements and and you'd you'd like it trust me <laughs> and it worked just fucking won't get on the day <laughs> <laughs> um so uh seth let's go back to vancouver in the 90s you yes have shall we right yeah <laughs> alanis morissette was popular oh, yeah. <laughs> what a time for american yes. culture and canadian so uh how did you first get exposed to preacher and what did you think of it uh, me and Evan, we're virgins, and so we read a lot of comic books and spent a lot of time with each other writing uh, super bad at the time, um, and did not much else, honestly. Uh, and Evan's brother was a huge comic book fan as well, and would kind of pass stuff on to us as he saw fit, and I remember... Evan saying like, my brother gave me this and it's fucking crazy. And, and I remember reading it and it just blew my mind. It like, you know, it ba like the, the movies of the 90s were like my favorite, you know, that's what like really shaped my sensibility as someone who makes movies. So things like Pulp Fiction and Sam Raimi's early movies and Peter Jackson's early movies and Scorsese's movies and 
you know, Wes Anderson, the Coen Brothers movies. And then I read Preacher and it was like all those things combined into one thing. And so we just became obsessed with it and kind of just would talk about it all the time. And as soon as we had any power in Hollywood at all, we started trying to make it. And then it took uh, around 10 years for that to happen. <laughs> A blink. Yeah. Um, and what, what stood out, like what are some moments that you remember reading and going, I can't believe this is in print. Like how is this out there? Um, there was so much. It was so fucked up. Uh, <laughs> there was so much stuff that was just, I remember the look, the, the thing that I still remember is the look on the guy's face who gets his jaw shot off. <laughs> first, uh, it's the, it's like in Tulip's introduction in the yeah. comic mm. and he kind of has this look like, huh? Like, <laughs> like, like, it's like he's trying to look down at it to like decipher what's happened to him. And I remember just laughing and thinking like, whoa, like, and, and one of the th scenes me and Evan reference a lot when we make movies is the scene in Pulp Fiction where John Travolta accidentally blows the guy's head up in sure, the back yeah. of the car. And we always talk about how funny it is, but how fucked up it is. And, and that frame was like kind of the equivalent, you know, comic book version of that where there's like, should be nothing funny about it. But I still remember the look on the guy's face as he's like, huh? And like, uh, and it really made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, I think how funny it was, was honestly one right. of the things that <laughs> stuck with me. Yeah. So Sam, how did you get roped into this? What was the sell for you? What, what did Seth and Evan say to you? Uh, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd never heard of it. Um, they called me on a Skype, I think it was. They were in Vancouver making some movie about uh, North Korean dictators. <laughs> <laughs> Who can remember? It went really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, no, I stopped reading comics when I was a child. <laughs> and they were like, fucking idiot. You don't know what you're missing. You got to read Preacher. It's the greatest thing. So I read it. Um, and I, did, I didn't, you know, I had no idea how this was allowed to be in print, let alone <laughs> how we were going to ever put it on <laughs> television. Um, but yeah, then we just started to, to, to figure it out, and it's been two glorious years since then. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the end product, that pilot is really something, and uh, I want to talk to you guys about my favorite scene. It's hard to pick one, but the, uh, the airplane fight scene yeah. <laughs> is really something to behold. <laughs> that was... <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Joe, what's it yeah. like filming that? How much stage combat? It's a shitload to do, man. It's a fucking nightmare. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like a couple of you see like four. Can I get some more beer in that? <laughs> so anyone, I don't know. That's supposed to give away the like, secret. Yeah, exactly. Come on. We're all just pesters. But yeah, there's a lot involved. So what what happens is you'll go to. Um, so John and, uh, what's, how do you say his second name, dude? John Koyama. John okay. Koyama. So and I'm Jeff so Amato. Jeff Amato, our Jeff fight Amato choreographers. Fight uh, choreographers, pilot, yeah. they're fantastic, man. And what they'll do is they'll, sh they'll give you a breakdown, so they'll go, right, I'm you. Try not to be stupid and watch what I'm about to do. So, you do, <laughs> so you'll all have this, they'd show you this enormous fight, and you just think, shit, how am I going to break that down? It's really, it's really terrifying, because you don't want to let anyone down. It's like a brand new job. You're working for Seth and shit like that. You know, you just don't want to <laughs> be that. Is that Slovis? It fucking is as well. How you doing, lad? <laughs> <laughs> hey? He's here. He's come. He's directed one of the best episodes, I might mention. That bald fella right there. <laughs> <laughs> like a single breath. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a singular tit. So, yeah, so they break it down. Jesus Christ! They break it down for... <laughs> I fucking knew why. I don't mean it's not my fault, it's my personality, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's the way I was raised. So they break it down for you, and before you know it, you kind of know what you're doing. You sort of go from 30% to 50%, 60 up to 80. That's when people start getting caught on the bridge of the nose and stuff like that. You know, people are getting kicked in the nuts and shit. <laughs> but in the end, I, I, got, I was so terrified of not learning it and just letting everybody down that I sort of, I learned it all. I mean, I was in my fucking hotel room in the Sheraton. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I got it in the end. And I managed, so that's why there's so, I think that's why I use so much of it, which yeah. is a massive credit to me and only me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I learned uh, the fucking thing. I don't know my lines. Yeah. That's Matty! There's Matty, that's our producer. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> oh, I love that boy. Stand up and let us clap for you. <laughs> Go on. Go on, man. Yeah!
I love you, man. I love you, man. I'm sorry. sorry, I'm just useless at questions. Ask someone else something. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, <laughs> he he really is this character. Yeah. Like I I read I read these comics when they came out. And it's very bizarre to see someone walk up to you and be someone that you read about you know, yeah. in a fictional work who I've is a vampire. I've got genuine issues, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I'm only 32. Cassidy's fucking 190. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've fucked myself up in 32 years. Imagine if I lived that long. God. You won't. <laughs> 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 My fucking career. Anyway. Fuck me. Christ. Talk right. to Dominic or someone else. <laughs> let's, say, let's, let's get to the well behaved actors. So, uh, Ruth, let's talk about your big fight uh, scene. That was one of the first clips that was released, was the, the big car fight. And it was just a total thrill to look at, um, especially because. Yeah, we do get to see Tulip like shoot somebody in the comic, but like to see that kind of physicality was something new. Um, what was it like shooting that? Um, actually, I had a similar experience to Joe because worked with Koyama for a few days, like on mats, and mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a, a dance choreography essentially, and then transferred it to the car. It was fun. It was actually it was actually just they made, we have a lot of people looking after us who make it make it look make it easy, you know, and it's, uh, it's just a thrill. So Dominic, you know, you are the titular preacher. Um, when they come to you and describe this character, how did they break it down? What did they say Jesse was? It was the most unusual meeting I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> there were five hairy men in a sweaty room on the Sony lot <laughs> trying to describe something <laughs> undescribable. And they said, I think they started by sort of mentioning the characters, and they were all, oh, this, is, this is who I mean by the hairy blokes. Yeah. <laughs> Saying, so, you know, and there's this kid that looks like an anus, and he, <laughs> and he becomes a really famous musician. That might be in it. And I was like, oh, this is good, yeah, this sounds, sounds really <coughs> tempting me so far. But ultimately, the, the, the script, I, I, I got hold of the script, which I absolutely loved, and then I went um, back over all the, all the comics and was... Uh, yeah, I, 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 was, I was desperate to play, to play him. I mean, I was, it was a huge honor, an honor, honor that they thought that I was right in some way. I don't know what they saw during that meeting, but it was a very long meeting, and one in which also I got a real taste of the style, how Seth was describing it then, of all the films that he grew up loving. It was very much encompassing all those styles, and, and that was the vision of it, and that's the vision I saw when I, when I read the piece and knew that that's what it needed to be to make it work. And, th and th it's been that and more. And it's been one of the most enjoyable because there's so much involved in this, so many different styles. Um, and, it's, and TV, I never, didn't realize how quickly you, you're making each episode. We do each episode in seven days. And you're doing so many different, um, different scenes and, and trying out so many different genres as, you're, uh, as each day <coughs> unfolds. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. And Ruth, uh, you know, Tulip, has undergone some changes from the comic. I really like where they have taken the character. How was she described to you when they came to you and said, this is the character that we want to look at you for? Like, how did they summarize her? How do you encapsulate someone like that? I think the word that <clears throat> is most used in relation to Tulip is badass. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. She does work. build a bazooka out of soup cans yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, I, but I think, you know, there, there's, there's more to her than that you know I think that um, I think that the, the great thing about that first scene and how you meet her is that I mean it's, it's she's incredibly violent but there's also like a, a tender sort of humor about her that you kind of um, you sort of kind of fall a bit in love with her and kind of also sort of want to mother her a bit you know and look, and look after because so um, so I think that I think you'll see you'll see like that develop more and more through the series and um, and also, you, we, we kind of get involved with um, Jesse and Tulip's backstory. We visit them in their youth. And um, I think that, that's interesting because it, it shows how deep their bond actually is. And, um, you know, why, how and why they're, they're essentially soulmates. Kids were okay to work with in the... Uh... They were amazing. They were amazing. Kids were Weren't great. they? They were yeah. seriously yeah. good. Great. Can always go either way when you're doing stuff with child if actors. I think ch yeah. ch child actors are fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
they fucking so clever and grounded. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just this mess talking to the mothers, and they're like, no, nah, he's yeah, he's yeah. bed <laughs> nine o'clock. He's read all the Harry Potter books. I was I was still wiping shit up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's read every fucking Harry Potter. What do you mean he's read every Harry Potter? What's he fucking doing? Like, <laughs> does he know about the outside? Like, <laughs> sorry, I ruined things. I don't so. think we, I don't think we put you in any scenes with children. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is he so far away? That's why he sat me down here. <laughs> Oh, naughty one on the end. <laughs> so, uh, Seth and Sam, uh, you guys and Evan took uh, the show in a very different direction from the comic. Not necessarily spiritually, but in terms of plot and a lot of character backstory. Uh, why make those changes? Like, was there a point where you guys went, you know what, we can run with this and uh, go somewhere different? Uh, Garth was actually one of the first people to say that we should do that, honestly. Like, I think it was like this thing that we were afraid to say to some degree, which um, was, you know, like, this is an amazing comic, but an amazing comic and an amazing TV show are two very different things, you know? And some great comics, the best comics ever written, would not necessarily make good TV shows if you literally adapted them. And it was kind of just this like thing that was in the back of my head that I didn't quite know how to reconcile. And then Garth was like, well, you're going to change it, right? And me and Evan were like, oh, I don't know. He's like, it won't work. He's like, I don't even think it would time out. He's like, you'll get like two and a half seasons out of it or something. He's like, I don't think it'll work. And then I think once he said that, it really freed all of us to really explore. And then Sam was the one who was like, we should really turn the clock back. The show's called Preacher. By the time the comic starts, he's kind of done with it. Maybe we should see him actually trying to be a preacher and really making a go of it and really, um, you know, showing where his roots have grown and where he's from and, and really establishing the character in a way that kind of plays out more throughout the comics um, mm -hmm. a little bit. That was... Yeah. No, God is a, like, w is a big character in the comic and will be in the in the series as well, and it felt like sort of an opportunity to kind of see Jesse's investment in God and religion before um, kind of God's true nature is revealed to him in the same <laughs> way it is in the comics. So we, we sort of wanted to go back a little bit. We brought some stuff forward, but we actually moved some stuff back in terms of, yeah, like Seth was saying, really showing Really, we thought it was an opportunity to sort of have the trouble come to Jesse mm -hmm. in the beginning before he goes out and seeks trouble of his own. Yeah. Now, Garth, I hear you've been pretty involved in like seeing scripts beforehand. What most surprised you as a new idea? What did you go, that is amazing. I don't know that I ever could have come up with that. Like, um, if anything. If well, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd thought of the plane scene in the pilot. Yeah. And there's... Uh, there's a little bit of business coming later on with a rather tall chap with a pair of revolvers. Uh, <laughs> that, is, um, <laughs> that is frankly inspired. Uh, I wish I'd thought of that too. Um, I, I got the impression that when I said you're going to change it, all I was really doing was confirming the suspicion you already had. Uh, after all, even if you were to do, and I, th I think this idea was mooted at one point, one episode per issue, you'd yeah. still have to double the script. Yeah. A 24-page comic script will not get you a 42-minute episode of a TV show. You're going to need new material. I like all the new material. I also like, uh, and you'll see this as it progresses, um, some of the stuff from later in the book that's been brought forward. Uh, it's a question, I think, of pacing. It's a question of giving the story space to breathe. Um, the comic hits the ground, as you said, at 100 miles an hour and accelerates. It really just creates this maelstrom, this whirlwind that would whiz past a mainstream viewer and leave them bewildered. Uh, you need to slow it down. You need to give it space. They have. Ruth and Dominic, we were touching on this a little bit earlier. Ruth was. Um, the Tulip and Jesse relationship here is a lot more nuanced at the top of it 
than it was in the comic. And that's not dissing the comic. I love their relationship there. But here it's not like, you abandoned me and we're reunited after years apart. Like, you guys have been living around each other and have been kind of avoiding each other. How would you characterize the way each of you, as your characters, feels about the other as of when the show starts? <laughs> Don't fucking look at me. <laughs> wow. Um, well, more and more has been revealed to us, really, as actors, as it's gone on, and it's been—it's really helpful because it's informed every decision about, certainly, about what Jesse is now trying to do and achieve. Um, I think a lot of the guilt he's harboring is because of the father, and also because of Tulip and what he, what he feels how he feels he probably let her down. There's also something that's being revealed that's happened between the two of them that's extraordinarily um, upsetting, and, what, and what, what, a th something that's happened that they both can't move away from. And like Ruth said, they're, they're at the center of one another's lives. They have had tough, tough lives, tough childhoods, and they, they are each other's family. So that, that knowing that and that being the center of every action you make, and even though he's trying to escape that life, um, he's drawn to a friend, and he's also drawn to a, a town that he remembers his childhood and his father, the only me lasting member of his father, and he's trying to replicate um, what his father achieved to these sort of dysfunctional people in this town. But, and it's hard to escape something that um, you ultimately love and, uh, and, and des deep down want, want, to, want to still be near and with, but he knows for what he's trying to succeed at. Um, he, they have to be apart. But I imagine before this entity takes hold of him and he's decided to quit, he's probably going to find her and go back with her and carry on as they were, which was quite a happy place, but just a violent, dangerous one, which I quite like. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, how would you characterize the relationship? Well, um, Tulip returns to Annabelle essentially because she has unfinished business with Jesse. Something happened... <clears throat> to rupture their relationship. And I think that she um, she's ready now to um, uh, come back. And she need, I, think, I think the thing is they need each other in their lives, even though they, they're, they're kind of sort of, they're not very good for each other all the time. But they're, they're, there's, there's just a magnetism. But I think that I think that Tulip thinks it's going to be much easier to sort of entice Jesse back on the road again. But um, he, she, she's coming back to a man who essentially is, is wanting to evolve into a, into a different person. Um, and she, he, just, he feels that she's, she's sort of, I don't know, sort of um, toxic for him at the moment. And maybe she is. Um, but you get you also get the sense that you know there's something about that life that Jesse still can't resist that is it's in his blood and it's in his it's in his it's in his nature like there's a great um, bit in your fight sequence where the camera sort of slows and you just see a smile yeah. <laughs> and you just think you know and it, it's it, you're kind of worried for Jesse because you think you may, maybe you know maybe you know it's just his nature you know right. Joe what does Cassidy want more than anything else what does he want yeah and what does he not want? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he just, it seems that he, I, I think, it, uh, you know, 119 years old, everyone's just fucking died and left him. You know, I think it's just this constant, this tragic fucking roundabout of getting in trouble there, needing to move from there now because of those people, and I've got to fucking be here for a bit, and now I'm in shit with them, and now I've got to go over there. <laughs> My life, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I just so it's a sad. I mean, it's funny. He's like he is a jovial, he's a bit of a clown. But I mean, fuck me, that that kind of life doesn't come without some serious trauma. So you're dealing with this guy, and I think the reason he's settled, I think the, what he wants is to be loved and to love someone. You know, he's he's not this fucking sexy vampire that everyone keeps portraying. It's <laughs> <laughs> so boring. Like, Smouldering vampires are everywhere. Fuck like, yourself. Like so. <laughs> I think more than anything, he wants he wants to be loved, 
and he wants to be a part of something. He, I, I can imagine he's probably been bouncing from place to place for some time, maybe giving up all hope of ever settling and watching someone die again. I would imagine it'd be a very difficult thing to keep going through. He's probably got children that have fucking died, you know what I mean? So I think by the time he gets to Anvil, crash lands in Anvil, um, and he meets Jess, I think he sees a little, maybe a part of himself that once existed. He's on this path of redemption. He wants to sort himself. He's been a bit of a wanker. <laughs> How am I going to fix this? I'll be a preacher. That'll do. You know, my dad did it. And I think, like, Cassidy sort of, a, he's an old man and he's watching this young kid uh, make just fucking really boring decisions and it disp <laughs> he despairs of it. You know, he's, he's a realist and he's unapologetic, just like me. I'm unapologetic <laughs> about the way I am. I'm not sorry. I know I said I was sorry, but I don't mean it. <laughs> I don't mean it at all. I'm a sorry, but, I, you know, and I think, I think he just, like everybody else, he wants to be fucking loved. I think that's all it comes down to, doesn't it, really? Regardless of the fact he's a badass that bites people's necks. I, you know, I just think everybody needs someone, don't they? Is he like this on set, too? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the novelty wears off, though. You have to no, it them. doesn't. I, no. I almost died trying to hug Joe earlier. Today. He did. Fucking I, tell him, I always want to touch. I find myself touching Joe. I went past not... him, and you could feel that he's not very tactile. It's no. like he doesn't know. It's true. I don't know where to touch him. It's why they put us so far from each other. You're like being allowed into the chimp enclosure. You know the dangerous. You're like, fucking shit, actually. I'm, I'm immediately regretting it. They're quite dangerous. <laughs> Uh, this one could just pull my fucking, just gonna stay still. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like hugging Seth. <laughs> no, he's not. He actually literally put his arm through the fucking lift and the lift door just closed. <laughs> but dude, that's so brave. <laughs> this really brief, fleeting hug through these doors that are about to cut us in twine. <laughs> you always know when he's on set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm sorry. You mm. don't hear a lot, is Joe on set? <laughs> it might be something. He's like Asperger's or something. It might be a thing, this. It might be a yeah. thing. Don't try then to we'll stop. feel bad. Yeah, we'll yeah, feel yeah, bad. Just keep it going. Uh, <laughs> so, Seth, you've directed a fair amount now, and uh, you directed the pilot. What was unique and a learning experience about directing this pilot? Um, it was fun. It was different because of how many different genres it plays in. I mean, normally, I think, I think the movies we've directed kind of have different genre spins on them, but they're, they're comedies. And if they're not functioning on a comedic level on like a minute to minute basis, they will be considered failures. And so it was nice to do something, honestly, that wasn't like that, that allowed us to sit a little bit more in these, in these moments and to not say from the get go, like laughter is our barometer of quality here, you know? Um, and so, on a visual level, it allowed us to do a lot more. Uh, just comedy kind of locks you into a certain shooting pattern. Um, and so it was nice to be able to move the camera around. And, and on a genre level, you know, there's science fiction and horror and Western, you know, you know, kind of Southern Gothic stuff. And there's kind of like, you know, Scorsese and stuff and Tarantino-esque stuff. And to be able to really indulge in all those different genres and like fully just go for it on a visual level and on a tonal level and, and really try to make a show, we kept saying, that could like support that infrastructure, to have something where you could bounce from space to Africa to Texas to Russia and, and to not have it seem random or, or jarring, but to really have it seem like a part of a cohesive piece. Um, and that was something we talked a lot about and was just a totally unique, uh, experience and uh, completely unlike anything we'd even attempted to do. There was nothing that told us we would be able to do it. Um, <laughs> it was really just a big swing we took, mostly because we knew we'd be super pissed if someone else took it. All right, well, we're about to do Q&A in about one minute, but real quick, uh, Ruth and Dominic, hardest word to do in the accent? Oh, that's a good question. Hardest, oh my gosh. Oh, hardest <clears throat> word. Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> 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 But you don't yes, want to make it, it too. It is because you don't want to go, yes, you. You <laughs> don't want to over, over egg it, yeah. I always thought I sounded a bit funny. Yeah. Jesse? Yeah. Man's Padre. Yeah. I can't say Padre. Yeah. I've got to fucking Padre. say it every five minutes. Padre, it's just got to really throw it out too quick. He knows what I'm on about because he's fucking Irish. <laughs> oh, he's American. Like, what's the problem? What's the problem? You Padre. hear it every episode, right? Over yeah. and over and over again. Padre, me and him. Did you say it wrong? 
Oh, he says it really wrong. How you Don't say, say fucking Does wrong. He? That's He's right. Hold on. Hold, on. Uh, Hold, on. Uh, Hold on. He's from the north. How do you say it? Let's hear how you say it. How are you supposed to say it? How do you say it? Draw your no, 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 don't ask me. Really I'm, really not I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. Say it. Go on. Padre. 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 I've been doing it fucking wrong yet. Oh, it's been four months. It's been watching I was fucking that. That's so true. See, as as a total, uh, you know, American here, I didn't know you were doing a different accent within the accent. Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah. He plays yeah. an Irish person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm an Irish person. I'm English. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, my brain's out. Unbelievable. I get it a lot. Unbelievable. Like, you Scottish? You Scottish? <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> Screwed it up. Scottish? No, I'm <laughs> Scottish. No, I'm not Scottish. <laughs> no coming back from that one. Okay. Uh, b -b 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 Australia? Australia? From Australia? <laughs> I was doing like really beer? well, too. <laughs> <laughs> was I doing okay? I was doing really fine, well. and then really I messed good. that up. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, question for Ruth. Oh. As someone who isn't familiar with the comic book, what can I look forward to most in Preacher? There's a little oh. heart too, by the way. I think. Oh, yeah, nice. thank you. Um, I just think I, I personally, I just think it's just it's a th it's just a thrilling ride. Everything. Um, I I think it's I think it's fun and it's um, it takes risks. It feels like we're not. It doesn't feel like we're confined to any one genre, and that just gives us as actors like such a a lovely sort of. Um, ability to play, and 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 I think I think all of it really. There's nothing specifically that that, it, that I can that comes to mind. What do you think? Well, why are you putting me in? <laughs> <laughs> Involve me in that question. <laughs> Deal with it. Right, we'll move on to the next one. So, um, Sean from the Preacher podcast, Ooh. I guess is a thing. Oh. Um, <laughs> is Sean out there? It is Sean, hey, West Sean. Hey. Thanks for fighting the good fight. Um, <laughs> Uh, AMC is known historically for a hands-off approach with both Breaking Bad and Mad Men. How was uh, your experience with this project? Me? Yeah, sorry, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have specified. Yeah, we've got all sorts of AMC executives here. I know, uh, yeah. They've been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they have been really they good. Really have. Oh, they really have. They have. They really have. They let us blow up Tom Cruise for fuck's yeah. sake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sean also asks, what are the odds that we'll see the Zippo? Uh, the <laughs> Zippo you will see, but uh, you'll have to wait for it. Yeah, if you've read the comics, you know Jesse doesn't have the Zippo. Not, not to start. Yeah. He's a great. He, he, yeah. Read the comics. <laughs> Read the comics. He's, he's got it down here, he knows. Uh, this is a question for Garth. How do you know when a creative idea is worth pursuing or trashing? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to know. <laughs> if, it, if it survives a night on the beer, and you can remember it the next day, it's probably not bad. It's a question of finding the right home for it. That's a horribly technical question, that is. <laughs> um, Miserable oh. bastard, I know. <laughs> I'd be oh, happy yeah. after all that. Uh, oh, he's a good drinker. We have good times. Okay, we got another one for Garth. Mm. What's it like for Garth to see his stuff? I'll address it to you. Garth, what's it like for you to see <laughs> your stuff come to life? And what do, uh, do you think about the changes? I guess we already asked the second one. But what does it feel like to see this stuff that is based on stuff mm. you wrote for the first time on screen? What's the emotion going through you at that oh, point? Oh, it feels absolutely brilliant. Yeah. If you want to know my favorite bits. Yes, please. Um, from the pilot, it would be... It would be, come down here and give old Cassidy a kiss. <laughs> and we are who we are, Jesse Custer. But my absolute favorite scene begins with the dark and handsome stick and ends, what sort of a preacher are you? That was just sheer yeah. joy, <laughs> absolutely. So it's brilliant. That was my line, that. <laughs> <laughs> you crushed it. <laughs> it I think that was fucking my line, that. And he's crediting for that shit, you know. <laughs> we are thinking, I've got to try things, Christ. <laughs> uh, Dominic, how did you keep a straight face when acting in the scene with Eugene? <laughs> yeah, with difficulty at the beginning. <laughs> but he, he's incredible. I mean, I, I, think, I think that character's developed so much as we sort of went on, right? It was, I think at first maybe 
it was meant to be very amusing. But then actually, he's such a great actor, Ian, that he, and he emotes so well with such a lack of, well, he has half his face covered up, so he's, he doesn't have the full express, facial expression. But what he's doing in his eyes is so, so wonderful and so revealing that when I'm acting with him, it's kind of, it's very touching. And he, he kind of exposes all the stuff that Jesse's terrified of and he's trying desperately to shy away from and hide. Um, so it became, it wasn't funny. After the initial shock of it, in fact, it's more funny talking to him now without it on. Yeah. He looks... <laughs> really, I, him with a mouth is really unusual. <laughs> we make him talk like this. Just. <laughs> <laughs> really saw cheeks out. What was in the meat milkshake? What was that actually made out of? I didn't ask, to be told. <laughs> I don't know. It was meat. There's bits yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was meat, yeah. He's a method actor. He's a very good actor, yeah. <laughs> but what's funny is because of the mask, he can't eat, like, he has he to drink. Around. Yeah. <laughs> like, it actually... Oh, like, throughout the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, at lunch, he has yeah. to have shakes and shit. <laughs> yeah. Bad man. He never complains, does he? He never complains yeah. to his credit. Is. Well, he <laughs> might be complaining. He just can't see. <laughs> he, can't hear, yeah. he can have a really miserable look on his face. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a PS to that one. Uh, Seth, you do not look like Miley Cyrus's kneecap. I think I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Miley Cyrus's kneecap. Who the f it's a long story. I'll tell you after. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Seth slash Evan, we'll just say Sam. How about that? Um, this show <laughs> took a Sisyphean effort to get made, and I'm so pumped that it did. The comic is so rich with elements and themes. There's everything. What is the most important element or the feeling that the comic evokes that you want to convey to the viewer? <laughs> Evan, I didn't write that. Evan. They did. I know Evan. Evan. Thoughts, yeah. yeah. Um, it's in Hawaii, isn't it? I think, again, what we, what, we, what we talked a lot about was making a show that was like incredibly emotionally grounded and relatable, but at the same time really had the sense that anything literally anything could happen at any second that um <clears throat> on a stylistic level on a narrative level on a story level um that was because that's what the comic did honestly you did not know what the fuck was going to happen when you turned the page you didn't know what year you were going to be in you didn't know what <laughs> dimension you were you know it, it was it was completely unpredictable but at the same time you loved the characters and amidst all that mayhem all you wanted was the three of them to be happy in the end, you know? And that was really, again, something we talked a lot about, was how to spin those plates, like make a show that's insane and at the same time, like just a really sweet story about three people who deserve to be happy, you know? Uh, that's fucking <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much fucked up stuff that happens. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. After you watch the chainsaw fight in episode two, you might not feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm involved. For, for Seth Rogen, any desire to guest star in an episode? Jessica from Brooklyn, love you and your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Um, Don't I, say it. No, uh, yeah, there's, there's been roles we've talked about, perhaps, but they're, they're in future seasons, potentially. I, Definitely. Uh, yeah. He's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. There's one that we're excited about potentially <laughs> yeah. doing, but yeah, it'll, it'll require <laughs> If he's it'll God, I'm curious, yeah. man, yeah. if he plays God. No, I mean, I that would be great if I cast myself as God. <laughs> I would I'd never hear the end of that. All right, well, um, that does it for our time. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you to everybody, to Seth, to Sam, to Jeff.